Picture this, two guys trapped in the South Charleston Public Library. One guy loves movies, the other, well, he'd rather be watching reality TV. Can they survive each other's films? Find out on Real Opposites, a library podcast about movies. Hosted by Josh and Aaron from the South Charleston Public Library. It's showtime, folks. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Real Opposites. I'm Aaron. And I'm Josh. And we're back to discuss our movies that we chose last time in the podcast. Yep. I chose Step Up for Josh. And I chose All That Jazz for Aaron. And this is, uh, this is, <laughs> this is the podcast. <laughs> this is what we're going to talk about. So let's dive into Step Up first. Oh, okay. Well, I what like are you, this What movie. are your thoughts it's, on Step Up? Well, I mean, obviously I picked it, so I like it. It's a 2006 film. I feel like it feels like a 2006 film. It's yeah. just a fun film from back in those days. From the golden age. Some good music, you know. Good little soundtrack. Lots of dancing. Debatable. What, <laughs> what did you think of it? <laughs> That's all you thought of it? You like soundtrack? No, I, I mean, I plan on talking more, but... <laughs> Um, <laughs> I was really, I was really not looking forward to this. Mm-hmm. But I then was, you were blown I was away. Having, I was having flashbacks to Coyote Ugly, <laughs> and like, it's not that bad. It, it's not a bad movie. Like, I didn't Whoa. hate it. Uh, it's just very formulaic, kind of generic. Like, seeing it, you know, you could transpose it to whatever other, you know, dance or acting or even a sport. Now that I'm thinking about it, actually, I think they just took the Cutting Edge script. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Have you never seen Cutting Edge? The DB is that really a question? Moy- oh, well, never mind. <laughs> well, anyway, it's a movie about <laughs> about um, um, ice skaters. Oh, okay. It came out like 1991 or something, maybe. It's very similar. Like they're dynamic. They hate each other, but they have to work together or whatever. You know. Um, they fall in love, you know. So it's the same thing. Like we've seen that we've seen this movie a lot. I but guess. I will say, like, it's competently made and shot. Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan, which who is are they still married? No. So oh, this okay. but this was where they met. Yeah, yeah. Um so they met in two thousand six and then they okay. got married in two thousand nine, had a child, and then they got divorced in I think starting two thousand eight, but it ended up in Also like it did not last long. Nine years. Oh, you mean twenty eighteen? What I say? You said 2008. It was like they yes, got 20, divorced before they got 2018, married. 2018, okay. and the divorce was filed in 2019. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> they were Do you have the court married. papers? Um, <laughs> no, I just. You sound so like you have so much knowledge of this. <laughs> I told you, Step Up is a good movie. <laughs> it was okay. You have to know. You have to know the cast too. Yeah, you know? like like I said, I didn't hate it. The Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan are fine. Like the dancing is fine. Yeah. Like it's not. It's not, it wasn't as um, offensive to my senses as I anticipated. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> well, it's not, nothing I'm going to watch again. Like, yeah. There's nothing here that's like really never know. worthwhile, but as far as, uh, as far as dance movies go, it's, uh, it's okay. Yeah. See, you ended up liking it. Uh, but I mean. I tolerated it. But there is, at least there's like other things involved than just a dance movie. But I guess yeah. some of it is the same as you're saying. Like, he's also from a poor background. He's a foster kid. Yeah. He lives with all the other foster you, kids. But it kind of reminded me of, so the cutting edge is kind of like, that's where they kind of took a lot of the, uh, I feel like the, a lot of the the chemistry between uh, Jenna Dewan and Channing Tatum, like that, okay. that relationship. And then they kind of used the Good Bull Hunting script as well. <laughs> also not seen that. <laughs> it's like, uh, so Good Bull Hunting, Matt Damon is like a janitor and he's, kind of been in foster homes and everything and oh and he's at a, <laughs> at a sound familiar. he's a janitor at a school and they like put a math problem on the board and he's like you know just a naturally gifted mathematician and oh, you know, okay and he solves the problem and they can't figure it out and it's about so it's like it's similar except Jenny Tatum is the janitor at the school dances his just way have, in. yeah he dances his way in to the hearts and minds of everyone at the school and then gets a scholarship at the end you know right. so good for him yeah, I mean, but I think it also shows in the beginning of the movie him and his friend Mac and his little brother Skinny. 
they they like stole cars and took him to chop shops and things like that. So it all I mean he had character progression. I will say Yeah, the same little bit of the same as Google Hunting, because he gets in a fight <laughs> and then <laughs> and he goes to beat up some kids, some guys that he went to school with, and then um, he goes before the judge and the Thankfully, the professor at the school was like knows the judge, and he kind of gets him off with just oh. he has to go see a psychiatrist, you know. So it's it, it's a, it's very similar setup, <laughs> but it is character progression. <laughs> it is, like so, I said, like there's nothing. There's a little there's, bit of meat. There's like a you know, there's a just a a very paint by numbers movie. Yeah, and you know, there's nothing really surprising or inventive or anything, but it does what it does just perfectly fine it's yeah. perfectly acceptable but i felt like there were there <laughs> there are like multiple small stories involved because like jenna dewan's character nora she mm-hmm. has that boyfriend yeah in the beginning mm-hmm. i don't remember his name um but anyways you know and there's a whole issue with him and he's a singer and then miles is a dancer no, no he's uh miles Miles is the, does like does the music. For oh, me. the DJ. DJ. Okay, that's the word I'm thinking of. And you know, there's like a yeah. friendship there that gets yeah. broken, and then he still helps him later on, even though he drops him because he's getting money. And there's just all these little small stories as well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not discounting that those stories exist. They do. Listen, I'm and trying, like, and like they're I'm, okay. I'm like, trying to show you the depth of this movie, though. Um, it's deep. Then Skinny dies. I mean, then you're dealing with a death. Skinny dies. And a family. <laughs> so yeah, Skinny dies. Skinny dies, and then that brings in a whole other story. So then you're dealing with grief and how it's handled. <laughs> Even you can't talk about it in a straight face. <laughs> because you're laughing when it, well, it does happen. I you mean, clearly people see, die. You clearly see Mac and Tyler, which is Channing Tatum, you know, they re they re bond their friendship over yeah. skinny dying. I mean the mo- like the the movie is it, it has some charms. And like, there. you know, like That's by That's what I was looking there for. There you go. Largely Channing Tatum. Yeah, Channing Tatum. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, That's I mean, he's girl. good. He's good. Like, yeah, I've like seen him in some something else. I'm sure. You ever, the 21 Jump Street movies are fantastic. Oh, I did that. see one of those, and I liked yeah. it. And yeah, I it's to really, he's one. really funny. His debut in those. is she's the man. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is true. Um, Not that I, that may come up at a different time, but I, I, speaking of Channing Tatum, like I like the post like Magic Mike and uh, 21 Jump Street and stuff mm-hmm. that he's tip to, typically he's been taking like kind of smaller character. Parts. Like I know he was he was in Hateful Eight, had a little bit part in there, and nothing like huge. Yeah, like you know your typical kind of yeah. like handsome leading man. Yeah, kind of star roles, and that's um, I like that. Yeah, I mean I think he's a good actor, and he got the moves. Well, interesting enough, he he wasn't a dancer before this movie. He was an, he was an exotic dancer? Well, yeah, not like a, he was not a trained not dancer. a trained dancer. Yeah, yeah, he was an exotic dancer. So. But he was like super worried about being in this movie because they were trained dancers. Yeah. Um, because you have Jenna Dewan and oh my gosh, I just totally blanked. What's her name? She's not on this list. Uh, she's the dancer from she he she plays his little sister, Allison Stoner. She still dances, I think. Some, but she was in Missy Elliott videos as a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like the one with the kids in it. She's the main kid that dances. Anyways, okay. but they've both been in, uh, I think, Missy Elliott videos together. Okay. Uh, and then she did this movie, but he was super nervous because there were all these trained dancers because more of them were trained dancers. So I thought that was interesting. I did see that. I read that real quick. Yeah. Weirdly, it's Work It is the video yes. that Allison Stoner dances in. Yes. That is work not it. an appropriate video for a child. To no. Dance and I've, I've heard. <laughs> No, <laughs> they didn't know what the song was either. I'm sure um, they did not. They just, and then like the first time, I think it was her that was talking about it. The first time one of her family members watched it back with her, they were like, um, horrified. Yeah. But then they looked at the paycheck. Yeah. And right, like, and this, like, is this is fine. Uh, we can true. work it as much. Songs of anger, though. So that's, <laughs> right, that's true too. <laughs> and was so was was Channing Tatum in that video or something? No. So okay, Allison Sterner was and yeah. Jenna Dewan. Oh, and Jenna Dewan. I don't know if she was okay. in the same one, but she was in Missy Elliott videos previously as well so they were both dancers previous to that jenna dewan was actually a backup dancer for janet jackson oh 
That is also true. Yeah. But I thought I saw something. She was in Missy Elliott videos. Uh, gossip, gossip folks. Okay. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> total sidetrack. Last week, we talked about um, Squid in the Well, mm-hmm. which, like I said, is one of my favorite type of movies. Yeah. I also enjoy these, like, early 2000s, late 90s type, just fun yeah. movies. A they're little like, charming, <clears throat> things like that. I they're, mean, a little, they're a little charming, they're a little cheesy. Right. They are, they're just a fun I mean, watch. they're kind of throwbacks to, like, 80s in a lot of way. Oh, okay. Like, you know, like, this is, I mean, there's some, like, you know, Breakfast break. Club? No. There's, like, some, like, Breaking. I don't know if you've ever seen Breaking. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it's, like... It's a dance movie. Oh, okay. And there's like people from different walks of life coming to the dance. And it's yeah. Like, so, yeah. It's about I don't know. I, I just think sometimes those are fun to watch. Those are those are okay to like kind of turn your... It's similar to like a dumb action movie. It's like you just kind of turn your brain off and just kind of go with well, it. I don't watch those, but that's what I'm I mean. sure that's how it would I'm work. I'm trying to relate to you, Aaron. Oh, I see. I see. I don't really like dumb action movies anymore, but <laughs> <laughs> I can tolerate a generic romantic comedy more than I can a bad action movie. Ooh, is that what this is? A generic romantic comedy. Yeah. I mean, kind of. Yeah. Oh, that makes me feel you, gross. You say all the time you don't like love movies. <laughs> and then you like, pick them. Mo- but then you pick movies like this. I know. Which are, that's what they are. Funny, I mean, this is like, the heart of the movie is the romance between Channing and Jenna. I guess that's true. <laughs> um, which, which, funny got, enough, you, turns into a real love story yeah, in real life. You just got life. distracted by all the smooth moves. I just like the dancing. Um, so there's that. The Guardian wrote a review of this movie that said that... This the most important thing about this movie is this where most audiences meet Channing Tatum, who is a one man charm offensive for the whole movie. <laughs> yeah. He just draws he everybody in. <laughs> yes, he he's got that. He's got that that, that quality. Yeah, he just like I, mean, I like this guy. Yeah, I was indifferent towards him until uh, Magic Mike and Twenty One Jump Street, and I was like, this guy's funny. I like him. Like, yeah, he's. I always thought he's funny. He's also funny, and she's the man, which is another. Funny, fun movie. That's the one where she has she like dresses as a man, as her brother, yeah, as her brother, yeah, just like, the guys. But you haven't another seen throwback that. to the eighty movie. They, they, they cancel. Have you ever well, seen that? I never said that. All, no, of course okay. not. I'm not <laughs> saying that all these movies aren't throwbacks or ripoffs of other movies. No, I'm every, just saying. Well, I mean, every movie's a ripoff of something else. That's, that's the true. that's you except know, Scream. No. What's there's, it a rip off of? Well, I mean, there. It was like the a, it's like the whole the whole genre. Like, there's so many elements yes. that take from so many different movies. But, but it also makes fun of is, itself. Yeah, like we that is an example. That. You know, you they took from a lot of movies they loved and yeah. they created their own thing. Right, I mean, that's, that's true. The trouble you run into is when it's just so blatant and you have nothing to say. Like when right. the, the the movie that's taking a lot of inspiration and every movie does. Instead of inspiration, it's a total rip off. Yeah, and there's no and there's you, nothing. I mean, different. you can kind of feel sometimes when there's like when there's when there's passion behind a movie and there's a personality and then when there's not. Yeah. And this one's kind of like in the middle. Like mm-hmm. it feels like kind of like studio notes. We'll take this movie and this movie and we'll call them together. And then but we'll put it, a little bit of this. Thing. Yeah. And it, but it mostly works because of their chemistry. Yeah. You know, that is true. They I think if you obviously did, had good chemistry yeah, for I nine mean, years, if you didn't have them, this movie would be garbage and I would have really hated it. I could see that. Like I could, I think the cast is, I mean, in any movie, a cast is important. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, I mean, some movies, but like, I, I do see your point. Like that. That kind of proves it. Some like romantic comedy kind of things. Like Ugh, it, it, it I is. hate when you say that it word. Is. <laughs> it is. Deal with it. Can we start bleeping out that? <laughs> no. Yeah, like some romantic comedies, like you can just tell the the two leads are not. They just don't gel. Right. You know? They're just there but, for a paycheck. But you know, this. It, I mean, it works. It's a fine. It's okay. Little movie. Yeah. It's not that bad. So see, this gives me good outlook for Crossroads because. Mm. I mean, I just think you're going to enjoy Don't it. Don't push it. It's got a voice. Is Channing Tatum in Crossroads? No, but Britney Spears is. Mm. So we saw Donna's in Crossroads. Yes. And what's her name? The girl from Orange is the New Black. She plays Penatusky. I don't know. Oh! She was in Cleveland, the Cleveland abduction movie they did on Lifetime. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't help it. I was really, I, I was Why really wrapped up with that Lifetime story. But only because I was wrapped up in that story. Oh. It's crazy. Yes, Toby. It's, it's a real thing that happened. Taryn Manning. Yes, Taryn Manning. She, what she look like? What? Tiffany Doggett in, I mean, like all of the pictures from Orange is the New Black, which I feel like is not fair. Oh, okay. Like, I, I got you. Yeah. yeah. She's in other stuff. She's and she's great. in Crossroads? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the three main people. She's a good actress. So see. I'm now excited for Crossroads. Then you have Dan Aykroyd. Anyways, my point is, decent cast. Yeah. 
and another just fun. You, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, we've been leading up to it for so long. <laughs> January 1st. Yeah. Okay. yeah it'll be, we'll start off your new year. With Crossroads. With, cross with us and Crossroads. And whatever Josh picks, I guess. Mm. We better be We're good. just going to do Crossroads. <laughs> so it's just Crossroads. Look at Josh. Start off your new year with just Aaron <laughs> as he talks about Crossroads for an hour. You have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me talking about movies that I like. Oh. Hmm, that sounds like a podcast idea. <laughs> we'll run out of content real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I like the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just called Real Aaron. <laughs> About 40 seconds. <laughs> Bonus segments. It's just Aaron listing movies. I'm like, I like that one. What about it? I don't know. I just like it. I've seen it. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> oh. So so you're ready to watch Step Up 2, is what you're saying? No. I feel like... Channing Tatum's not in Step Up 2. I don't remember. He's not. Oh, okay. I would have noticed. Is like, nobody in Step Up 2? I don't think so. Nope. Is it New Cast? And then they did Step is Up... Is Allison Stoner not in Step Up 2? I don't know. Because there is a movie, there's a movie that Allison Stoner's in that she's a little bit older and she forms like a dance crew. Maybe it's uh, Step Up 3D. Isn't that really a thing? That's a thing. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay. No, I'm not joking. I was just saying. Maybe, no, she, maybe I, it's that one because there's three or four of these things. Yeah. She's definitely in another movie about a dance crew. It's another way that there's very like 80s throwbacks. It's like, hey, we made a hit movie. Let's make three more of them. <laughs> Actually, I yeah, that happens a lot. <laughs> I will say, um, when I chose this movie, in my head, it was the movie that I'm thinking about where they formed a dance crew. So you picked the wrong movie? <laughs> She's in Step Up All In and Step Up 3D. Which one's Step Up All In? Is that the second one? Never heard of that one. It's 2014. It's like the, oh, the wow. fourth one. They were still making it then? Mm -hmm. Well, just wait for the remake. So I'll have to Google and see what movie it is she forms a dance crew because I thought it was this one. But anyways, I, no, but I, I mean, I also like this movie. <laughs> I just thought I just took a piece from another movie and inserted it into this one. Yeah. I get really confused when I don't say T-Rexes in Shindor's list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm dizzy. <laughs> no, I think um, I do think it's a step up movie, though. Um, uh, I'm sure it is. It, it sounds is, like a step up is, movie. It is. I'm pretty sure it is step up. Because I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's what you do. You just create dance dance gangs. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. Listen, dance crews. Fun. Did you never watch that America's Best Dance Crew? Do you think it I was a TV that? show? <laughs> it was so good. No, I'm like really the Jabberwockies big. and yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. I'm a really big fan of. Uh, uh, so you think you can dance, and it has Twitch in it, who's also in the following Step Up movies, not in this one. I don't know. Who. He's a choreographer, but like, oh those, yeah, yeah, I movies. do know who that is. Uh, um, I've never seen So You Think You Can Dance though. It's a bit more bad reality television for Aaron to watch. <laughs> reality TV. Surprised he hasn't seen it. Here's my favorite out of Josh's <laughs> list of facts: is that the movie was title was dubbed as Sexy Dance. Oh yeah, in it, some countries. Oh yeah, yeah. And originally it was going to be called Music, Music High. Music High. Oh. Which so. it's it's not a high. Why would it be? It's not a high school. It is a high school. Is I, it a high school? It's a, it's a, it's a, I thought it was like a dance school. school. Oh, it's okay. A high school. Okay. <laughs> Still better than Coyote Ugly. I see. I don't. I don't understand the hate of Coyote Ugly. You liked this one? Yeah. I didn't. There was a love interest. There was music. There was dancing. I didn't hate the entire cast of this one like I did oh. Coyote Ugly. But this, I see the appeal, and it was an okay movie. Well, I'm so it. glad that you loved it. It's like, a, you know, Do you think middle like, of the road. your next movie shirt might be a step-up shirt? <laughs> <laughs> we get one where, like, ghost faces running into the, the dance hall with, like, stabbing people. That would be nice. I'd like that. Those have that. really high stakes for a teen movie. Step, step up. up. Like... They go kind of, they, you know. Oh, they have. Oh, yeah, it's like you're going to jail or whatever, yeah. <laughs> and, you know. Yeah, and, and someone dies. <laughs> this is true. In gang violence, which I feel like doesn't typically happen. Like, right. That's where all the issues come in that I was saying on the last podcast. This yeah. movie does did deal with some did issues. Did you ever see Dangerous Minds? You had to have seen that. I'm going to I'm gonna say no. With Michelle Pfeiffer? Gangsta's Paradise? Wow. Okay, never mind. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, just say like it's about a school. It's a different kind of school, but it's like you know oh. trouble and there's violence and uh, but uh, whatever. I like trouble and violence. <laughs> violence. Early two thousands, where they were trying to make urban movies, and they had predominantly a white cast. Yeah, kind of like this. When they would skim things from like black culture, but Step Up actually in a lot is considered to have done a much better job of actually like. Having a diverse having cast. Having their characters be, char- you know, having yeah. a diverse cast, having, you know, uh, black or people of color characters that were not just, um, you know, one thing or stereotypes. Or right. Stereotypes and like, uh, you know, having, you know, kids that were essentially like gangbangers. They were boosting cars yeah. and stuff, but they still had, you know, like that wasn't all that they were. If right. One was a dumb 13 year old. The other one was like, you know, just, they were trying to get by and they, you, you know, really should watch dangerous mind. You would like that movie. Um, is it as, did you hear the depth that step up has? It's Does about it that. that. It's about like, it is, it is very well reviewed. <laughs> Wait, were you talking about step up or were you talking about, about step, okay. up. step up? I like, uh, so there've been a couple of magazines recently that put out their 10 year or I guess four or five years ago now, put out their 10 year anniversary review for step up. And it was like, actually pretty well received so yeah i mean i, I mean there's a reason that was it like ebert? made money it was not ebert <laughs> no i doubt it there's I mean, a reason I don't know how, why it... how critically well reviewed it was but it it people pe- 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 people liked it, it was audiences yeah. liked well it, you know yeah it's a fun it's a fun movie like i said it's like it's one of those is kind of critic proof as long as you get the right two people together and the movie isn't completely right. just incompetently made then... and i agree with you on that i could see it being just some random people that didn't have chemistry and how it wouldn't work. Chemistry goes a long way. That's true. Well, I guess then we should discuss your movie. Okay. Um, all that jazz. Yeah. So what did you think of it? I thought you were going to tell us what you thought of oh, it. Oh, what I think of it? Well, I hadn't seen it in a long time. And then a couple months ago, I watched it again. Mm-hmm. And I was really just kind of blown away by it. And I don't remember it being that good. And I think it's like, um, you know, you kind of grow into a movie. You know, because I don't know how appealing it was to me when I was like, uh, you know, probably in high school when I watched it the first time. But I think it's just a unbelievably impressive film on all fronts. Not not just like the traditional like performances, which, you know, Roy Scheider's amazing. One of the all time best performances in any movie, I think. And funny fact, he did, he actually was not was not a dancer. His, the first scene he shot was like him dancing with his kids and he was terrified. See, and look he, at that. Uh, it Once again, the movies kind of relate. They do. Channing wasn't a dancer, and neither was the guy from Jaws. I was Jaws. about to bring that up when we were talking about Step Up, but <laughs> and I love that. I mean, it's it, it, so it's kind of the antithesis to Step Up. Step Up is a movie about dance. It's about two people falling in love, right? Dancing. Um, all that jazz, like on the surface, is like it's about performance and dance and a Broadway show, putting it together, and that's kind of like what the first half is about. But it's really about exercising your demons through your art mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Like Bob, Fa- I mean, it's not Bob Fosse. It's Oh, Joe or... Gideon, who's basically Bob Fosse. Like yeah. he's, this is an autobiography more or less. Um, Bob Fosse puts himself into the movie and it's, 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 it's about him and his experience making both movies because he made Cabaret several years before this, which was a big Oscar winner and everything. It's a great he, movie too. He also made Lenny, which is what they're yeah. spoofing with the stand up. Yeah. With the, with the stand up, um, like where he's editing the stand up yeah. movie in the, in the movie. I can't think of like a more autobiographical movie that's been made by a director, like just putting his life and his faults and his, you know, personal and professional level right. just out there on the screen. And just beyond that, like <clears throat> the the technical qualities of the movie, the production, the the choreography, the dancing, and the editing, the way he edits the music to the movement, and especially like the, when we get into the second half, it really goes into overdrive. And it's I mentioned like Stanley Kubrick, like this, he he said this was the best movie he had ever seen mm-hmm. when he saw it. He's actually mentioned in the movie too. And I can see a lot of inspiration because they do typically like to use a lot of classical music. And that's mm-hmm. what Kubrick, he drew drew from a lot of classical music for his movies. He didn't really have scores written aside from maybe The Shining. And the way that they edit is very similar. Like, I feel like there's a lot of the editing is similar in Clockwork Orange to this. Like, in the second half, it just goes steadily, inc- like, the way that... Picks up speed. Yeah, and the way he is, you know, especially after he has his heart attack... Mm. Um, the way he loses, both reflect on his life and is unable to change who he is. You know, like he's in the hospital and he's still trying to like smoke and have parties. And, right. And um, the doctors are like, he doesn't care, you know. 
why are we even bothering? And, you know, when you get to the, like the final musical number, I mean, I don't know how, how, how that must have felt him making that movie about himself. And like, he'd had a heart attack. Like this is, this is all. Right. He um, just didn't die. He didn't die. Right. He did die not long after the movie. This was his last yeah. movie. You know, so he had to be kind of like, he knows he's burning the, probably didn't have long. Right. He's kind of writing his own death in this movie. Yeah. And in real life. Yeah. You know, there's just so many moments that are just purely cinematic. And then especially in the second half. And it's like, there it's images and, and movement and motion that are kind of just stuck in my head now. Mm-hmm. I've watched the movie a couple, couple times actually since. And it's like the last shot. It's one of the last shots where, you know, he's, he's dying. And spoilers, it, it, they do one of the shots where the, the actor is standing on a track. So it's like they're floating mm-hmm. and the camera is locked to their position. And he sees Jessica Lange, who's playing, I guess his. Angelique. She's an, an angel. Angelique. Um, yeah. And who's, he's kind of like throughout the movie he they, they cut to like in this, his inner monologue and he's kind of confessing some stuff like yeah. just you know um, looking back on his life and his faults and everything and and she looks like an angel or something and at the end of a long hallway and then at a certain point the smash cut to him being zipped up in yeah. the bag and it's like just the the, the power of just a, a, the right cut at the right moment is is just really and it's just very powerful for me. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what I think of all that jazz. <laughs> I'm a big fan. What did you think, Aaron? Well, let's start with what I liked. Okay. Um, I do like the backstory that it is kind of a a self autobiography. Yeah, like an autobiography type thing. I like the story of it. That's kind of where it ends, though, for me. <laughs> You know, like anything? Like, no, well, like, okay, so <clears throat> I like the story. and, and What did I'm, you like about the story? I mean, I like that it's his it's story. That's a, that's and it, and okay. it is basically him laying his life out. And like you said, he's right. Like, it's this ended up being his last movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so he kind of was writing his own ending mm-hmm. um, as it was well, happening. I, I like, I just want to say something. I like how it starts out. Well, it almost starts off like a documentary. Right, like you're not sure, like it's just dancing, and they're trying to cast a, a show, and yeah. then it just kind of, as, as the movie progresses, it becomes like a fever dream. Yeah. You know? Now I will say, I thought that that opening scene was way too long. What of them got casting? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little bored. It's movement. It's like a the whole. It, yeah, it, it was the whole movie. Each segment is edited and choreographed like a. It's like a musical number. Right. So, I caught on to that. Okay. So there, I did catch on to it's things. too long. I just, I wasn't a big fan of it. I found it a little boring. But like I said, I like the story. Now, I did like end number was probably my favorite part. Mm-hmm. Not only because it was ending, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but I, I did like the end number and the shot that you were talking about because I think at the end, I almost was like, well, maybe he he does survive. Maybe this one isn't happening in his head or like, you know, things like that. And then that cut to the zip up. You're just like, oh, snap. OK, so he did die. He, yeah. He's definitely dead. So I did like that shot as well. I know there were things throughout it. And I could tell that this is one of those movies that you would say have all this like, you know, technical good. Like I I caught on to that. OK. I don't know the names of it. At least you can recognize it now. Right. I I recognized. I was like, oh, okay, this is technically good. But I don't know. I just didn't find the the fun in it. I, mean, um, I don't know if it's supposed to be fun. Oh. It's a man losing his mind and dying pretty much. Like, like self, I, still there, it's a I man, feel like there's a fun a man, way to do that. It's a man self-destructing. Like that's not right. Really, and maybe it's There's because, a lot of entertainment value, and, and you can appreciate how much someone like that puts into whatever art there's, they're creating. Right. But it's not like... A rollicking good time, right? You know what I mean, right? Like, I there's get humor that. in the movie, but the humor, um, like Toby was saying earlier, is not like kind of like gut busting, like mm-hmm. kind of humor, kind of like it serves the dramatic purposes of the story. It's not just there to be funny, yeah. And it really comes from from what's going on in the characters and where they're at. I think what I was saying is that it's like there are moments that it's definitely supposed to be a joke, but you're also not supposed to laugh, yeah. 
Like you're you're supposed to be feeling it through like his point of view, and it's like so it'll be a moment that's like this was a joke, and it doesn't land because it's hitting home for the yeah. main character. Yeah. And it's like even though he wrote it, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, and then I don't know that I got like a liking for the character. I don't know that you're supposed to even. I mean, so I think I also didn't care if he died. That's the thing is I don't I don't. He's complex and he has serious right. faults, but just you know, character faults. But I mean, like a lot of that, like they go through and they show you, like, kind of why he is the way he is. Like he was brought up in a an exotic, I think it's like an exotic dance club mm-hmm. like, from a very early age, and, right. you know, and that kind of influenced like his his ways feelings like adult. towards women yeah. and you know how he views that kind of stuff and. Right. You know, that that would influence how he he views alcohol or drugs or, you know, his, you know, work life, his, he just never stops. And he's always, you know, it's not just enough that he has to produce and direct a Broadway show, but he's also editing a movie. Yeah. You know, I I mean, I like movies where they're not, like, I I don't really need to like the character. I can see, I can find something to. I mean, it just depends, I think. I mean, I can find something to relate to. Right. You know, and. I think you can learn a lot if the character isn't, you know, just kind of deadly dude right, like right. the whole. It's, it's just a portrait of of him, right? You know, and well, how that... he was. And but 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 at the same time, like you, you maybe like if you met him or worked with him, maybe you wouldn't right. like him. Um, but oh, I was just gonna say, Anne Wrinkling said in an interview about this movie, she had asked uh, Bob Fosse, like, "Why did you make this? This isn't you. Like, this is how people are going to see you." Mm-hmm. And then he said. Well, because if you pity Joe Gideon, then you miss the moral of the story, which is that there is a danger and glamour. Yeah. Uh, which is like, you know, it's, exactly. it's meant to be kind of a warning off putting so much of yourself into your art that you lose everyone that's important to you. Right. Yeah. I guess and that's I'll, true. And I'll expand it from that, like the way that they show you all the different sides that te- that goes into making something like this, like, you know, the suits, the money men, you know, how mm-hmm. he just kind of has to placate them and... And he has to, you know, the money man with the the movie too, and it's it's all kind of like what go what like kind of a look behind the scenes before this kind of stuff was like more out there as far as like how movies are made, how Broadway shows were made. Yeah, I thought Roy Scheider did great. Yeah. Well, yeah, at portraying the unfolding of like that whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's what I say. Like this, the story, I enjoy the story, and. The it's not like the acting was bad or anything. I think just as a whole, it's just not a movie I enjoy. Okay, if that makes sense. So like I can appreciate the story, and I think if it was a more fun movie, I would really like it. Hey, you just had a heart attack and you're gonna die. But yeah. before we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna go get ice cream and go on the roller coasters. And I mean, <laughs> I mean they do throw a full on musical. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but even that seemed boring. It's really sad. Yeah, and it's like it's like I think I'm gonna die. It's like that's the song. Well, that <laughs> was my it, favorite one. But I love that. I love that. You know the lyrics, but the 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 pageantry of it all right. is very that that is very opulent and not not what the song is. And right, and kinda, that is what I liked. And that's kind of who he is. Yeah, you know, that's what I say. I like the end of the movie. Like he produces very lavish movies and and musicals. Right, but on the inside, he's like, I'm gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I caught I'm slowly a, killing myself. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I do like, I did like his conversations with Jessica Lange. So, I mean, I guess, I, which I like her. That was interesting because that is in the inner monologue part and it really drove the story. But at least this time I thought it was boring and very technical. <laughs> Technically good. What, what technical qualities did you like? Well, there's, you know, like when they, uh, you know, how they, so did you like? Did the movie. You kind of like? <laughs> did you like, recognize like the way they edit the the numbers? Like they would snap and it would edit. Like you know the the music would hit a beat and it would right. Cut. Yeah, yeah. And it's stuff like that that I thought and like the cuts, how to cut to the next scene, basically like that. Yeah. And, and like the the way the numbers were done and they stood for different things and different parts of his life and. Like, I liked, I don't know why I said liked, but I understood. Oh, you just said you liked it. (laughs) Well, sometimes we slip. (laughs) I understood the movie. Like, I never was lost. 
Okay. Well, so that's good. That's good. Damn. I don't know if a year ago if that would have <laughs> this would have <laughs> might have just went like phew. Did you notice the things they repeated? Like any no. of the, a couple times during the movie, they do the the visine, hmm. then the Adderall. Yeah. Then the it's showtime. Yeah. Basically. He, like, oh the yeah yeah yeah. And he takes the well, Adderall and also through. the comedian. Uh, yeah. They yeah. Certain parts of his was done multiple times. Oh yeah, and I think I think they even cut in some of his dialogue at the end during the end. Yeah, um, the it was. big finale. Mm-hmm. Like it's like all the synapses are firing right. in his brain before he dies. Yeah. And it's just like this is this is how he's And that's what I said. Like the end, the the last song and his death yeah. were my favorite parts. I, I just really I actually enjoyed that part of yeah. the movie. Okay. Um I don't know what it is about the rest of the movie. Like I said, I enjoy the story and I like the idea behind the the inner monologues and him basically tearing his life piece by piece. As he's dying, mm-hmm. so I like the concept. I just I don't know. I didn't okay. Just didn't enjoy the movie that's as fine. a whole. You know that's fine. Yeah. Well, at least you. I feel like at least you have a better understanding of like why. Right. Like you maybe didn't like it, or yeah. you at least appreciate qualities, even though you didn't personally find it enjoy appealing. That's what I'm saying. Like I I, I get where it can be a good movie. As far as like technically and and shots and things like that, just for me, it just wasn't a movie that I would watch and be like, "Oh, I am so much enjoying this." Okay. Um, maybe if there were, I don't know, like a dance crew. <laughs> there was a lot of dancing. It's like I don't know how many musical numbers and dance numbers there are. I felt like they were boring though. They didn't have Jenna and Channing. I don't know. They didn't. Maybe that's what they needed. They had sand off. I don't know. So I say, like, what if they reshot this movie? Oh my god! <laughs> but we combined it with Step Up. You, you, I, I think. I, I think that would miss a lot of. I don't know. I think it'd make a great movie. Um, Step Up to Jazz. Hmm. <laughs> this might be our last podcast. <laughs> Like, okay. Oh, do you, either of you guys know much about Lenny Bruce? Yeah. Like, because oh, yeah, that's, so I can definitely see why Fosse, you know, he did the autobiography of Lenny Bruce, but you also mm-hmm. get him coming back over and over in the story as Lenny Bruce's life is very similar to this. Yeah. He was a famous comedian for breaking um, obscenity laws. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically he'd go on stage, he'd say whatever, he'd get arrested, he'd go to jail. He also oh. had a morphine addiction. Okay. Lenny Bruce dies of an overdose. It's a really close parallel of like, you know, womanizing entertainer who pours his whole self into his work and then slowly spots spirals out of control as like he's while he's having some of the most success of his career yeah so like bob fossey did lenny he did chicago he did cabaret like so he had all this stuff going on mirrored in the joe gideon story and then like it was definitely i think he was definitely seeing like in lenny bruce this like similar like life life trajectory which i think they kind of give you him like you know editing lenny bruce's story obsessively because it's like again like where you said he put he mm. wrote his own ending yeah. in this. it's i think he it might have been indicating that he was feeling like he was writing his ending yeah because even uh, like they have like a test screening and people were like this is great just leave it just mm-hmm. you know and like most of the reviews are good and he's just like no we need to recut it because mm-hmm. he's just i think like like you're saying like it's he's seeing himself in in the Lenny Bruce and that kind of comedian right. the story in the movie you know it's a Lenny Bruce character mm-hmm so it's, yeah. it's that's yeah, a really good take, Toby. In the marvelous Miss Maisel, if you've not seen that, it's a show, Aaron. You could watch it. It's oh really yeah, he good. is in one of that. He's I've not a, heard of it. Oh, it's great. It's about a female comedian in New York in the, like the 1940s, and oh. it's hilarious. I haven't seen it. I've never heard it of is, it actually. Really? Yeah. Oh. I watched like it. the first season. It's pretty good. Hmm. Well, I do like TV, so yeah. well, better than movies, but well, nobody's stuck on an island. <laughs> <laughs> so just be prepared for that. <laughs> There's no like prize money. There kind of is. I mean, she's also kind of in an island. She's like the only person doing what she's doing. That's yeah, like, true. I mean, metaphysically, like she's the only person doing. <laughs> Toby what is she's really doing stretching to try to make me want to watch no, this. It's a great coming show. up with really good. 
analogies. But yeah. it also has uh, Lenny Bruce in it, and it's his life story as well. He was like a huge like pop culture icon. Do you know who like, George Carlin is? Yeah. Thing. Okay. It's very similar. Okay. Like, George Carlin kind of followed in Lenny Bruce's steps. You know, like, oh, okay. It, Carlin was like really straight laced when he started doing comedy, like on uh, like on, on Ed Sullivan and stuff, and then kind of Lenny Bruce broke down whatever you know the barriers and like obscenity laws and everything, and he was just like, okay, now I'm gonna really say what I want to say. Yeah. So it's if you know him, like that's similar. Oh, okay. Similar kind of thing to yeah, I know who that Lenny is. Bruce in a way. Lenny Bruce was a cool dude. Originally, just a little bit of trivia. Okay. On all that jazz. Since there's very little trivia for Step Up. There's probably great trivia. <laughs> Richard Dreyfuss was originally going to be Joe Gideon. It's hard to imagine anybody else other than Roy Scheider in that role. I know that they did a Bob Fosse show on FX, I think. It's uh, Michelle Williams and, oh, Sam Rockwell. That's a great choice. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said uh, as far as standout characters. I mean, I know he's the lead character, but Roy Scheider, I think... I oh. think did a great job of bringing the story to screen. Yeah. Which I saw something about in the one scene in the beginning when they're picking dancers. Mm -hmm. um, Fosse was actually in his ear with an earpiece. Um, oh, that's funny. Telling, oh. him, uh, telling him about like what to say. Things to say to the actor. So it made it sound yeah. like he, he really knew how hmm. it would go that's cool. um, during the choosing of different dancers. Um, Things that he would have said. Right. And that's what I say. And, and and that goes into it in the fact that I like the idea behind this movie. I like why it was done. I like the idea that he was basically unraveling through the movie in a way and writing his last everything because mm -hmm. it ended up being his last movie. And, and, you know, he died not long after. I like those stories, which we've done like Taxi Driver, mm -hmm. where it's a man in his thoughts unfolding. The inner monologues, really seeing what the character's going through and and knowing their thoughts about it. Like thought balloons. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. So, and you get that when he's talking to Jessica Lange. It's him thinking about his own life and just putting his little two cents in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I liked those aspects of it. But I just thought Roy Scheider did a, did a great job at playing Joe Gideon. So Anne You're Reekling, who is Katie, is playing herself. Because at that time she was Bob Fosse's real life girlfriend. Right. So she's just. She also had a. Like, oh really? She had. I a, did not know that. Yeah, yeah, and she had to audition multiple times to be chosen. Yeah. Wow. She's playing herself, but yeah. she had to audition like six times to <laughs> play herself. Go Which I mean, I think you would. I mean, if you're making basically an autobiographical pick, you probably would be pretty choosy about what you're doing and how you're doing things. I would think so. Yeah. I just want Jack Black to play me. Oh god. So, I mean, I can see that. Yeah. I, I mean, do you have a better choice? No, that's the choice. Um, I think that's I can see Jonah Hill, maybe. Okay. That yeah, would work. Maybe. I could do that. You could do that. That's one of my favorite uh, questions to ask people. Like, if if there was a movie about your life, or if you were creating, if you were doing a Fosse here, and you were creating oh. your, your okay. uh, uh, own movie, <laughs> who... Who would I cast? Who would you cast as yourself? Oh, so you cast Jack Black. That's who I would choose. I don't know, man. Or at least at one point in my life, that's who I would have chose. I thought it would really work. I do not find myself as funny as him, but... That's fair. Just in general. <laughs> you might not know who this is, but I've John Bradley, he's been in a lot of stuff lately, would, would do you very well. Oh, okay. No, I don't know who that is. Is he in movies? That's yeah. probably why I don't know him. He really wasn't bad, on Survivor. He's recently in a real bad romantic comedy with Owen Wilson and Jenny from the Block. Oh, Marry Me? Oh. Yeah. Was that bad? It was. It's probably about like Step Up. Yeah. Oh. It's great. not bad. It's, it's just, just generic. Well, I would generic. like it, but it's a rom-com. It's, it's not so exactly like it. reinventing like anything. Step Up, that's a rom-com. It is so not. I think you would like Step Up it. is a very great dance movie that happens to have some romance in it. I'm pick I'm like looking through some stuff. Okay. And you were she, thinking hard on this. I, well, yeah. Toby, this is what a about serious... Uh, right. I talked a whole lot this episode. No, no. I'm it. I'm just asking you... Oh, who I would cast? Who, um, yeah, we're talking about doing a Fosse. Oh. This is movie related yeah, here. Yeah, this, this is a good... So plan. we're doing our own Fosse, and like, who would... I don't know. There's not an actor or actress out there that you would just be like, that person. That's I... Uh, Did you come up with something? 
I would pick Christian Bale because he can play anything. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like, what are we going for, man? I, whatever you want us to be. I mean, just in in your if you were making a movie about you, like you know, you were doing your Fosse here and being like, "This is my life. This is what I want to present as my life." John Who Cusack. Okay. Okay. I could see that. That's yep. And I could see good. that. He's a good actor. Yeah. See, that's what we're going for. I really for. like his, uh, his love and mercy. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that. It's good. I'm a high fidelity and gross point blank. And the, and the grifters. If you have any suggestions, I'm open. I don't know. I'm not good at that. Yeah, I always ask people what they would cast yeah, themselves. Yeah, it's like you got to pick Actually, what I, you would uh, Yeah. Cast I, w- I always want to know what, who. Because it kind of gives you an insight as to what how that person sees their life. So I'm always interested in that and then who they think I would, who would play me. Yeah, see, uh, I'm asking the second question before I come up with the answer to the first. I know, but I don't like to tell answers. I just like to I, get answers. Like if just throwing, I would pick probably Emma Stone for Toby. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. It's the same quirky kind of yeah. like. Yep. Yep. That I could work. That. that would be really good, actually. Same, I think it's the same crazy like. Punny. And I like Emma Stone. Uh, yeah, we have a similar sense of humor. Like her in like uh, La La Land. Her or her in like Easy A. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was oh, going to yeah, say. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. That's a really yep. good old movie. Yeah. I like Easy is, A. Oh, uh, that is a good movie. I like a good high school good movie. movie. That's uh, a good movie. I could see I mean, that. That also like, has Amanda Bynes in it. See that. Oh, she like the well, mean, mean Girl kind of thing? Yeah, like the religious. Oh, she's that yeah, one. Okay. She's the like crazy, yeah, religious girl that leads the um, chants and things. If it was back then when Amanda Bynes was doing movies, uh, Amanda Bynes? Amanda Bynes would have probably been up there too. They have a similar quirky kind of sense yeah. of humor too. Man of like was good. Either of them. But that, so, I don't know. So for some reason, I, when I meet new people, that question is something I do, like, even it's though I don't question. watch movies. <laughs> yeah. I want to know who would play you in a movie. I was Ralph on season four of Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. <sighs> oh my. So Aaron, did you ever go to dance school? <laughs> you learned how to dance? Aaron, yeah. Aaron, do you know how to dance? I d- I've never been taught how to dance. But you know how to dance. I are you a, are you Shannon Tatum? You just <laughs> no professional experience. I, you, I never said I know how to dance. You just walk into a dance studio and you're just like see them dancing and you're just like, oh yeah. And I then you walk that. over and you just start busting moves. I probably I'm probably somebody that feels like I can. Yeah. But you're Elaine from Seinfeld. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But <laughs> but I feel like Somebody watching it would be like, that kid does not know how to dance. Yeah. But I would feel like I'm getting As long it. as you have fun, that's what's important. Right. I, f- I would feel like I'm getting all the moves down. Why? Did you... Are you a dancer? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, I would say, yeah, I was like, a la Drax from Guardians of the Galaxy. Are you a dancer or not a dancer? Like, <laughs> so I don't know what that means either. It's like, so there are people that when music comes on, just naturally just to start, start to like move. Proven. And then there are people that are like, hmm... Oh, no, I definitely groove. Yeah, I groove. I'm, I'm um, it's just probably not well. <laughs> Same as I sing, also not well. It's okay, as long as you are confident and have a good time doing it. I mean, that's like in my house or in my car, not in public. I do both. Yeah. Um, I, I do, well, I don't know. Sometimes I sing here. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I've, heard, <laughs> I've heard some notes. <laughs> you also meow, but that's neither yeah, here nor that's, there. Um, you know, sometimes things happen. Yep. <laughs> That's good. I love karaoke. I used to karaoke when I'd have little shindigs as like a teenager. Mm-hmm. And it would just be me karaoke, basically, and my friends having to watch. <laughs> um, <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> what <a diva. laughs> which, which now, they could have also karaoke, but they wouldn't. Um, so this is too entertaining. But <laughs> I think it was just they didn't want to do it. I doubt it was very entertaining. But it's just... The problem is I really can't sing, like 100% cannot sing, but I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm a good time. I'm entertaining sometimes. You didn't like lock them in the room with you and then just No, no, no. The doors were unlocked. Okay. No, the doors were unlocked. They were just chained to the wall. Uh, um, Okay. (laughs) Speaking of uncomfortable performances, let's pivot back to the films and go over Roy's dance number that he did for the money people. Oh, yeah. With so, you know, when they're and the erotica, so, you know, it's about number. like 40 minutes in where the, the money people are there and he's showing off what they have, like as far as the choreography and the songs. Oh, okay, and then yeah, he yeah. says, where he's like showing them what's yeah, and then what he's, they've been, and it's like 
So that's kind of the song and dance he has to do for the money people. Right. To kind of produce a, you know, like a family show or mm-hmm. something more, you know, pop. You know? Right. And, and then he's like, there's one more and he, the lights go off and mm-hmm. they do this very erotic dance number where everyone Does, takes their clothes off. And Doesn't one of them say something like, well, that's not family or. Yeah. One of the money guys yeah. is like, they're just, they're horrified. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. So it, I do remember I also that. like this is like one of the things that I really like about the movie is how they portray this more or less the studio executives. Right. This was a movie. Um, and it's like they're horrified at anything that's genuinely artistic or coming from a personal place, which is how the movie industry generally works. Right. And after he has his heart attack and he's in the hospital, you have this. The scene at the like a boardroom where the the guys are going over their money with the insurance um, insurance agent, right? And they're tallying everything up about you know if he dies they they're going to make like a half a million dollar profit if if Gideon dies and be like the first Broadway show to ever turn a profit with never having a performance, you know? And yeah. it's like it's just. You know, it shows it's all they care about. Yeah, and it's you know, and there there's like a there's a little bit of reservation, in it, but there's and they're also like, eh, it's half million dollars. Look at all right, just pocket. That's his experience with money men. You know right. and how they really just, you know, they're investors. They don't. And it's similar to like what happened to to film around that time, especially going into like the mid '80s, is corporations bought all the studios mm-hmm. and people without an artistic bone in their body. Um, started producing movies. Which and you said it was an issue with Godfather. Yeah, yeah, going back like there, yeah. But that was like, that was his first movie. He was kind of untested to a certain degree with that level of money right. and cast and stuff. Um, corporations started owning all the studios, which is just even worse now. Right. You know, because Disney owns like 60% of yeah the movie studios at this point. It's just ridiculous. And that way, that aspect of the movie is kind of like a, ahead of its time. You know, showing how um, insensitive they are to the the voice of the artist in the in in the product, you know, right. the the movie or the show or whatever they're they're putting out there. Yeah, and I think sometimes that it definitely hinders movies. And it, oh yeah, <sighs> movies are worse now than they've ever been. <laughs> right, and it's, 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 and going, it's, it's like everyone, obviously you're doing something wrong. Yeah, well, I mean, mainstream movies. There's a lot of great films, you know, and from more independent right yeah or just yeah. like but like that modestly budgeted a movie that's aimed at adults mm-hmm. you know maybe like 30 years ago we had silence of the lambs and unforgiven were like both critically kind of like best picture winners but also very financially successful and people love the movies right and it's like those those movies don't exist anymore really it's like the the big oscar winning movies nobody sees yeah and there's like there's you know there's still a few filmmakers that are making like good movies for adults on a you know on a on a big budget but there's just less and less of that anymore interestingly yeah. Fosse had his funding pulled for this film yeah because he went over budget on the last number and so yeah. they sold the movie to fox yeah uh, to get the rest oh, of really? the at the very end mm-hmm. which worked out for fox because the movie was like oscar nominated and yeah very successful so hmm. the money men lost <laughs> All right, so I guess that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you guys for dancing into September with us. Um, for our next podcast, Josh, what what did you what do you have for me? I'm gonna pick Quentin Tarantino's Pulp Fiction for you. Okay. When you sent me your list, you said DVDs you own. Mm-hmm. You had Reservoir Dogs on there. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, you like Reservoir Dogs? I had never seen it. Never seen. It. So I was like, <laughs> a little part of me died inside. So I'm picking a Pulp Fiction for you. Okay. Which is, it's one of my favorite movies, and I, I, I think you'll like it. Okay. I will say it's a movie I've wanted to watch. Okay. If that, not that I know what it's about, but just because it is what it is. Yeah, it's a cultural yeah. touchstone. Yeah. So we'll see. Maybe I'll love it. Okay. What, have, what am I going to have to endure? Okay. So for you, I have chosen Selena. Okay. I like it. It's a, yeah. it's like a, it's not an autobiography type pick, but it's a, it's a biography. biography. Yeah. So that's no, cool. 
And I know you've seen it, but it's been a long time. Yes. It's one of my favorite movies, so... Okay. And it's a little different than other movies I've picked, I think. Yes. So. Agreed. It's yeah. more... <laughs> awesome? I don't know. It's more, it's more like a traditionally good movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't necessarily have to go in and like really searching with a magnifying glass to find something positive to say about it. Right. Well, Jennifer Lopez is in it. Her first Yeah, no, I mean, it's from what I remember, I like the movie. Okay. It's been, it's been a long time. Well, so that's what we'll do. Okay. That's next time. We're now in September. Okay, seeing as it's September, all of our, our events are returning to the library. So both the adult services and youth services will be having their events. Okay, so for adult services, we have a couple things going on. We have a creative space workshop that's going to happen on the 3rd. Check out our Facebook or our newsletter for more information on that. Those are really cool. Um, those are actually hosted by Toby. It gives you a chance to learn how to use some of this stuff in our creative space. On the 12th at 6 p.m., we will have trivia night with Toby and myself. Uh, so come out to that. We're trying to throw out a new fun event for people to do. Um, so we're going to have a trivia night. And the other thing that we'll have is book club. That's it on the 19th. But you do need to sign up and grab your book ahead of that so that you can read it. Josh, there's an, a, an adult movie event. Yeah, we have on the September 15th at 5 o'clock, we're going to be showing, for our real, real cinephiles, we're going to be showing Mad Max Fury Road, the black and chrome edition. So it's black and white. And so we're going to watch that and talk about it. And then the following day on the 16th at 530, there's going to be a real R-E-E-L, Real Readers Youth Program we're starting for ages 10 and up. So it's kind of like a visual literacy program, teaching kids how to kind of how to digest what they're watching, um, which is more important than ever now because they get so much of their information from visual forms online. So we're going to be showing uh, Steven Spielberg's E.T. for the first show, and then we're going to have um, every couple weeks a new movie, either on a Friday or Saturday. So it's basically like a breakdown of what they are getting yeah, like how um, like digitally. Getting them to think critically about what they're watching. And so what that, they're seeing. So that also they're not getting... Bamboozled. Bam, yeah, bamboozled so that they can see through any kind of propaganda that's right. being thrown their way and just understand that there's more that goes into what they're watching than just mindless consumption, that there's there's artistic integrity behind what So in watching. other words, Most, what Josh is going to be doing for the, the, the youth is the same thing he does for me on this podcast. <laughs> I, I reckon I'll have more success with the teens. Although you have tried. I have. You have you have yeah. <laughs> progressed. <laughs> Baby steps. Okay, so that is a new program that we're doing with yeah. the youth department. And the youth department will also, like I said, be starting back up their other programs. So they're going to have alphabets on Tuesdays at 1030 and um, words and wiggles Thursdays at 1030. And... They will have their new family events, Time Out for Family, 6.30 on Tuesdays. And, of course, on top of that, we will have the teen room. It doesn't start until September 12th, but that is where we have the room for all the teens to come over from uh, the middle school and work on their homework, or sometimes we have events for them. So something for them to do after school. And, of course, look for another episode from us, September 15th, when we will discuss Selena and... Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. So until next time, I'm Aaron. And I'm Josh. And this has been Row Opposites.
chemistry goes a long way. That's true. All right. Ready to move on to all that I jazz? Failed chemistry in college. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought that was necessary. I mean... <laughs> Birds chirping. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Cricket. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, the cricket's in the cage. <laughs> I was like, who cra- claps for crickets? I was hoping. There you go. 